So this is just a quick rundown of my tune for Sarah and Ben's sample competition. Starting with the intro, it's just Ben's rainbow arp, which is in a group, and I then layered it with a pitched up version, which had some warping on it. Then Sarah's ambient progression, which I chopped up and unedited with Ableton's beats warp mode. just gives the tune a sense of pace from the get-go and starts to speed it up. Then I reversed the ARP and pitched it up using Ableton's Beats Warp mode. Just adds to the sense of speed. This next group is the same ARP, just warped and pitched around differently and being hocketed, which is a technique I learned from Mr. Bill. Um, so you're hearing the different stems randomly at different times. Just adds a sense of pace and a bit of ear candy, if nothing else. Using the different pitches and textures, it just makes it a bit more interesting and less stale and didn't want to just sound too much like Sarah's intro. This second one's more just to give a bit of impact and further add to that sense of speed. They're all warped individually and a bit different, but they're just processed really harshly instead. So these pianos are from Ben's Piano Rising thing. I just added a bit of pitch automation to them. So the bend at the end just makes it sound sort of vinyl-y and all warped. And they're running through a delay, which is repeating it. So on to the first main section, I guess I'll start with the drums and how they sound. So the kick and snare aren't anything special, one snare's from Sarah, one's from Ben, and then the kick is just from Sarah. Also that clappy intro snare is from Ben. They stay, all the samples stay the same for the drums throughout, they just change patterns. I then used that percussion loop from Ben as well, it was just give it a bit of a swung feel and it also added a bit of a delay to the snare. The next thing is all that glitchy percussion, which came from the 130-ish pure data sample. Um, just took a short loop and then spliced it into different samples on a drum rack. And then I'm triggering it with an arpeggiator, which is changing rhythm, that's what the automation is and using a random chance thing to alter the pitch. Then got LFOs, which are transposing all of the individual chops, which give it a really glitchy sort of sound and really unpredictable. Then just a bit of distortion and a bit of EQ. That's what it sounds like with the rest of it. It gives it quite a fast paced feel rather than the more laid back, just kick and snare. On to the more tuneful bits, I started with Ben's piano, which I chopped up. Just re-pitched a few of the different chords and put them into a rhythm. So here's like the original progression. It's pretty cool, but I thought it'd be a bit more inspiring if I chopped it up and it'd work better for my tune. I then did another channel of the chords and bit crushed him 
and panned in between the two. It's pretty subtle, but it just adds a bit of ear candy and grabs your attention and just creates a bit more movement in the track. You can see just an LFO. I initially filtered it, but I didn't like that. Then that rising piano arc comes back, but this time I uh, pitch them around a bit using Ableton's warp modes. To accompany this, I kind of wanted like some strings, which are like this. These are all made out of those uh, rising piano chops. So they are still the sample. I just did that by using one of um, the, the beats warp mode and slicing it on 16th notes, I'm pretty sure, and then rendered them out. So it's the same loop and follows the same structure. And you can see in the wave files, it's just the transients. Duplicated these and pitched them around a bit just to thicken up that section. Then what I did afterwards, I wanted a kind of bell-like synth, so I converted it to a melody. So I had all the MIDI for it, but Ableton's not always brilliant at that, so it'll add some notes that aren't there. And then I made like a whistly synth out of the machine drum sample. So all together it kind of sounds like this. On the process and it's just a bit of reverb EQ and then I've got different things side chaining it just for a bit of clarity because it got quite thick. Then use Isotope's vinyl thing just to kind of wind it down and allow me to move into a next section. That's what all that automation is mostly. Here's just a quick example of the machine, a comparison of the machine drum sample. Just because of all the processing on it, it'd be a pain in the arse to show off. But you can see from the wave files, they are the same sample. It just that that ringy tone at the end of the snare is what I used. Then I'll just uh, move on to the basses for this section. These are mostly straightforward. It was a one shot from the pack that I just then processed. One of them's got an arpeggiator on, the other's just straight up kind of a droning thing. It drones from note to note. Didn't really want them doing too much, just kind of adding that weight in the bottom end because all the melodic stuff was more grabbing your attention. Then these bells, um, which are kind of panned between your ears, they're just that machine drum sample again. One of them's just rendered out into audio and pitched around a bit. They just like continue the progression of the track and just add a bit of something different. Um, then these chords from Sarah, they just run through some reverb and then pitched around a bit. Don't really add too much, just a bit of variety before you move on to the next section. You get that kind of tremolo type feel as well from the beat warp mode. So as we leave this section, there's some white noise. Just kind of gives a feel like the radio's gone dead and that it's changing to something else, which is a bit different. So that's the original white noise file that I ended up rendering out. And this was made from dropping that rainbow arp into a simpler. 
So you can hear that here. Just get rid of the processing. So it's reversed and pitched up a bit. So I constrained the loop length to a really small size and I added an LFO which sweeps through the pitch really fast. Because white noise is all frequencies being swept really fast, it kind of gives that effect. So after that we lead into a new section. Piano chords are the same, just kind of pitched around a bit different. Drums are the same, just a different pattern. And it's still that same whistle synth from the start. Got a bit of a rainbow arc going on, which is played forwards and then reversed just to add a bit of a swell in there. So not too much different going on drum wise, but I did add these hats, which are using an arpeggiator to change the rhythm they're being played at. So there's a few of the different hat and glitch sounds which are also being triggered like 9% of the time. It just adds a bit of variety and a bit of a glitchiness to the track. Then I chopped up the Slice Me. The Slice Me file, just a short loop of that, had a few chops and did a similar thing where it's selecting chops randomly but using an arpeggiator to give it a bit of groove can hear the file here. It just chops that on the transients. Um, basses are the same really, nothing much has changed. Then there's these bells. These are all part of a group which is hocketed and I made this by rendering out that sort of whistle lead sound which was made from the machine drum. You can see the all it chops between the three different groups which are embedded in that by listening to the input of the side chain. Um, just creates like a granular layer of everything. That crazy wiggly automation is how it's selecting between the two. That's just the way I did it. I wanted something that was a bit more controlled but still added a bit of a weird kind of background texture which fit with the main melody. But they're all, the individual stems are all warped differently and pitched around and like I consolidated the bottom two down differently so they were giving a bit of a beat. So I had this crazy white noise riser, which was being automated with auto pan and a filter opening up. It sounds pretty wild. Then here's like the drop section. So the main thing that's changed here is these crazy like wobbly synth sounds. Um, this started with this cool chord chop I had, idea I had, but I didn't end up liking. So they're just the piano chords using an arpeggiator and changing the rhythms and they're just bit crushed and shitty. So I liked that idea, but it just wasn't really going anywhere. Um, so I used the same piano chops. I just warped the hell out of them. So they're up by 24 semitones and uh, then mangled with the warping modes. 
lots of processing on these to get the sound in semi decent as well. So you can hear to start with the pretty harsh and uninspiring. So I'm using an arpeggiator to give them a bit of rhythm, um, transposing them and ruining them with the warping modes. Uh, then just a bit of compression, uh, isotope vocal doubler to thicken it, and mini verb by audio thing to add a bit of lower pitch. Then I've got Melder Morph, which is a spectral morphing plugin. Taking the input from the hats to modulate the sound of the keys, which is sounding pretty weird. But it also triggers them. So they play at the same rhythm as the hi-hats, and when the hi-hats cut out, they stop. This gave everything a pretty upbeat feel and quite fast, as well as being a pretty interesting way of processing them, it sounded great. Uh, then just a bit of compression and a bit of EQ to kind of reel them in. And just a side chained gate from the kick just to give it a bit more flavour, just help make it more rhythmic. I then rendered these out and warped them individually to thicken it up because it's pretty high pitched and nasty all on its own. So this one was to add that more middle body. She's using Ableton's different warp modes and transposing it down an octave. And then I did the same, which is down two octaves, and just gives a bit of attack and a bit of weight. So all together they sound a lot bigger than just the one on their own. Then they're going through an EQ and some reverb just to help them along in a side chain from the kick. There's also these other basses that I made which are underneath, um, which add a bit more pace and a bit more weight to the tune as well as the original just low end droning bass. Um, these were made using that noise, um, so I grabbed that noise file, uh, dropped it into a simpler, and then I constrained it to a really, really short loop length so that you were getting just a pitch um, and managed to get away with tuning that to a C, and then I did four different octaves and it ended up sounding like a synth bass, which was pretty cool. It's a very raw sort of digital wave sound. Just excuse while I fiddle about in Ableton, these groups were deactivated because I didn't really plan on using them again. So then I just printed them down and dropped them into a simpler and you can see that wave file matches the wave files in the simplers for those bases. Moving on into this section there's some kind of weird glitchy sounds which pop in which is sort of like a bit of ear candy going from left to right and doing weird things with the panning. And most of these are just the original samples just kind of abused and processed really, really harshly. So the first one is just that resampled sound from the basses, which I made out of the noise. So this like a resample of a resample sounds like this. Which is two layers of the same thing, just processed different. Then there's this loop which is one of Sarah's samples, just warped really far in. It's that bass run and then it's just pitched around and processed weird. Then I made a really weird drum hit. So that's like a heavy sort of trap beat type thing got some crazy pitch automation on it as well as being warped 
then once again the processing on it is just obnoxious to make it an obnoxious sound. Then the same thing from before, just ascending rather than descending. Then this sound is that cloud loop. Just absolutely abused with OTT and distortion, just sounds really nasty. And But when it's sped up, it just makes a really cool glitchy texture. And then this is just a reversed and more heavily processed version, so it gives like a call and a response thing. Then I use Sarah's click melody. This is paired with some noise, which I'll get into shortly. It's just pitched crazy and processed really harshly again, using an audio thing, band pass filter and a phaser and then I've got an LFO modulating the frequency on the band pass filter so yeah ruined that lovely bit of guitar there It's also got quite a big pitch automation on it as well. Then that last one's just that bass run again, just warped it a little bit differently. Then going up onto some more noise again, but these are pretty wild with automation. Often being paired with the sounds that you're hearing down at the bottom. So this is just the filter and the auto pan at work mostly, it's nothing too crazy. And then there's these bells again, which create the fade out, uh, automating distortion and a delay to create a really big swell for it to finish out on and still hock it in them at the same time. So it creates a lot of movement even in the end of the tune. That's pretty much it. Thanks for listening. And thanks to Sarah, Ben and Polly N for putting the competition on. It was a ton of fun. <laughs>